welcome to episode 9 of Anime and Us Solo. I'm TJ. And I'm Marcus. And this is the review show that reviews anime-related shows one episode at a time. Not really, because of Marcus. Hey, I'm here. You are here for the fifth straight episode. We're going into the season finale of season 1 of Ruby, episode 16. It's called, I don't know why I wrote Black History. Black and white. (laughs) When appropriate, TJ. When appropriate. Yeah. It's yeah, it's black, black and white. You're my you're my black friend. I can say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. So I'm chuckling at it. It's hilarious. <laughs> so I can say stuff like that now because of that. Anyway, we should probably get into this. The best anime. thing, the viewers, they don't, they don't know I'm black. Maybe I'm white still. They don't know. Well, your name is Marcus Chappelle, so yeah, it's a French last name, my friend. Yeah, tell that to Dave. Okay, okay, got it. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> what a intro that was. Yeah, we started off real strong with this one. <laughs> so we open up with Blake telling her past how she was part of the White Fang, and she joined it, and she was on the front lines of all the pickets for all the injustice that's been happening to the White Fang. And she doesn't believe that the White Fang is behind this the dust-stealing thing. Meanwhile, Ruby, Weiss, and Yang are still out looking for her, and Penny shows back up. Oh, adorable old Penny. With her shenanigans and Ruby's Penny's... I'm not actually sure why Penny shows back up, honestly. Yeah, I was thinking about that. Her and uh, Monkey Boy son, Sonny, son, son. Son is with Blake, because Blake had run away. Yeah. But Penny, Penny shows back up, and she's like... And Ruby's like, we're looking for Blake or whatever, and Weiss and Yang just abandoned Ruby to hang out with Penny by herself. Because they don't want to deal with her. I understand that. We'll do the same. So we have everyone broken up. Blake's with Sun, Ruby's with Penny, and Weiss is with Yang. And Weiss and Yang just kind of disappear for the rest of the episode. While Sun it comes up with the idea, if, if you know, the way, you don't think the White Fang's in, we should go to where they would be if they were behind it. And if they're not there, then they're not behind it. It's kind of backward logic, but it kind of really makes backwards. sense. But it kind of makes yeah. sense, too. It in does a weird, in a wacky way. In a weird way, yeah. But, so, they go there, essentially. They go to the stock where all this dust is shipping, and they're staking it out, and sure enough, the White Fang do show up. And they're being led by Roman Torchwick, the, the bad guy that's been throughout the whole first season. But here's my thing. He shows up, and they're going to steal all this dust in these containers, right? Correct. And then And Blake and Son are staking up, so they're going to get in the fight there. Where is the f***ing security for this place? I mean, that's my du- question for a lot of this. Th- I mean, th- this dust is super expensive and super important, right? Yeah. Doesn't doesn't the white the Schnee family company have security to be protecting this stuff? These guys just show up in planes. Exactly, and start- they, all, they always travel in planes, always. So you know, you can see it, let alone hear it from miles away. Well, not even that. They show up and there's no one there to greet them and stop them Never. or anything. It's very inefficient. And no wonder why you keep getting robbed. And we know police exist in this world because we saw them before. Right, exactly. But anyway, Blake doesn't understand why the White Fang are working with humans because they don't work with humans. No. So she goes down there and attacks Roman and he tells her that now there you are. So a big fight happens and then Blake and Son start beating up some White Fang lackeys and then they start fighting Torchwick who proves to be pretty formidable himself. Surprisingly, yeah, because usually the villains are just like squirming at the guys. This guy, he's holding his own. Yeah, he's got a cane that's a gun. Now, great. I, I granted. I assume he's like how old is he? Do you think? Uh, twenties. Yeah, and this, these are still students, so you know, maybe later on I'll surpass him. Yeah, I mean, he is beating up on a bunch of kids, I guess. Yeah, so you know, it can't be that hard for him. True, that's fair. So Ruby shows up with Penny, and Ruby gets blasted. Yeah, she and she's Penny's like, I am combat ready, and goes to fight. And Ruby's like, No, what are you doing? Are you stupid? And then Ruby, pro- uh, not Ruby, Penny produces these knives from out of her hand back, and, and not just like a few knives. She's got these big. They're like short swords. Yeah, and they and the- spin around her and shoot lasers and shit. Blade Ward and D and D. You guys play that. I'm sorry. That's I'm fine. No, it's fine. <laughs> it's a good. It's a good explanation. But yeah, it's. Penny kicks some ass, and she she, does. 
She takes down all these planes. She beats everybody off up and causes Roman to run away. Mm-hmm. And then finally the police show up. Finally, after all the ruckus. Right. And then Weiss and Yang show up too. And Weiss and Blake make up. They're, she doesn't care that she was in it. And she's not because she's no longer part of it. But, you know, Weiss still doesn't trust Sun. But, you know, everything's okay with the group. Meanwhile, Professor Osborne gets a message from this mysterious crow guy that the queen gets has pawns. And then we end with the kids talking and Penny being driven away in a limo. But who's driving the limo? I don't know who's driving the limo. They don't really say. No, they don't. I know it's not the bad guy like you thought. I could have sworn it was. I'm sorry. I misread the ending. Because there's uh, credits and something happens at the end of the credits. Yeah, the credits. There's a credit. There's a song. And then at the end, the very, the big, the girl from the very first episode, the big, the the girl in the helicopter out Roman escape who has fire powers. Mm-hmm. She shows up with two other guys, two of two other people, and he says, "You screwed up, Roman. Now we got to do it our way." Yeah, that seems like a fun cliffhanger, honestly. Yeah, we're getting introduced to the who's actually behind everything. It looks like, and you know, she has cool powers and stuff. So yeah, I always love seeing a bigger, battered person. Right, but- and fire powers are always cool. So. But yeah, like you said, like this powder, gem stuff, if it's so important, why not protect it? Now, I've never seen it protected once throughout this show. No, it's not. It, it, the whole city seems to have a lack of security. They seem to depend on these little kids set for all their defense needs. Which is not a good way to defend anything. These kids, you know, hormonal. It's, especially when some of the teachers have, like, are little, little magicians and magic users. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, it was it was a good season finale. It had a lot of action in it. The fights the fights are probably the best thing in the show, honestly. Yeah, surprisingly, yeah. They are well choreographed for sure. They are. I'm not saying that the scenes where there's no fights are not good. Just... No. There's just not a lot of it because of the how short the episodes are. Yeah. So it's it feels a little rushed in spots. Like and there's a lot of skipping around too. Like, time, like, weeks have passed after it was just one day. Yeah. All the fast traveling, essentially. Like, yeah. we gotta get the story going. Yeah. And overall, for a show that seemed to, didn't have much of a budget, did pretty well, I think. Oh, yeah. And it's got his fan. Hey, we're reviewing it, so it's still, well, something, still something. It's reviewing because the wheel chose it, but. Nah, no. Nah. That was Fate's. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yes. So it was Fate's fault that I had the reviews, the worst anime I ever watched last week. There's no such thing as the worst anime, TJ. Oh, yeah? I beg to differ. What was it? It was called La Storia Something Something Familia. The fa- story of the Arcane Family. Oh, I know that. I love that anime. How's it? That's not that bad. You all know what that anime is. No, not the slightest. No. But I want to talk about, like, we talked about this off mic, and I want to say, like, the music, the season finale, the end credit music, fantastic. Yeah, I like the music in this, but you said you didn't like it. No, not, I don't like the opening, at least. The, this this last one, yes. But the opening overall, this opening entrance, always skip them. This is not for me. I get why people like them. It's good music, but it's not my good music, if that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, people like what they like, and everyone has their own different tastes. But I personally find the music some of the best stuff in the show, honestly. And that's why your taste is bad. Yeah, it's okay. I mean, I do do a podcast with you. <laughs> That's fair. I eat McDonald's, so yes, my taste is not that good. That's it for this season of Ruby. I don't know when we'll be back with the second season. You know what? Uh, let's, get, let's get them a date. Let's say January 1st, 2022. <laughs> sure. I'll give us some buffer time. Considering it's March in 2021. Yeah, so it'll give us some time to buckle down on this. Yeah. But, so, this will be the last episode release, and then Anime and Us should be back next week. With whatever episode we did for that one. I don't remember what it is. I'm replacing Marcus with Sean. Yes. I hope you guys enjoyed me. So I didn't uh, enjoy you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to stop myself there before I... <laughs> All right. But, yeah. That's it for Ruby Season 1. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Bye. Bye.